Now what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the dentin. And the dentin, just to recap, is right under the enamel. So the enamel is the white part. The dentin is inside or underneath the enamel and it's in yellow. What's cool about the dentin is that they have these holes or these tubules, we call them dentinal tubules. And so keep that in mind because we're actually going to touch on that as we progress through the chapter. So dentin is yellow and it has these tubules. And these tubules, um, it actually it looks like a tube like that. Okay, so it's like a tubule. This is just a cross section, but it does extend, it does go down. Okay, so when we're looking at the dentin, we know it is yellow especially if you compare it to enamel, which is white. Remember when we talked about enamel, we said the enamel has 96% inorganic um, calcium hydroxyapatite crystals, Well, the dentin is not 96%, it's 70%. So 70% inorganic, 20% organic, and 10% water. Just kind of be familiar with these numbers because that's the composition of dentin. Now, dentin is a little softer than enamel. Enamel, remember, is like the hardest tissue in your body. But dentin is still a hard tissue. It's harder than bone. It's harder than cementum. Cementum, by the way, is what covers the roots. So the root is covered by this yellow-brown layer, and that layer is called cementum. But So dentin is harder than bone, so it's still hard. It's a hard tissue, but it is softer than enamel. When we take a radiograph, um, one of the, th the terms that we should know is that dentin is radiolucent than enamel, but more radio-opaque than pulp. So what does that mean? Radio-opaque means white. So this is radio-opaque. It looks white. Radiolucent means black. So this is radiolucent. Um, the pulp that we're seeing here that I'm outlining is radiolucent. Enamel is radio-opaque. Dentin is kind of right in the middle, right? So it's more radiolucent than enamel. It's more black than enamel, um, but it's more radio-opaque than pulp. It's more whiter than pulp. So it's like right in between. So this is radio-opaque and this is radiolucent. The pulp is radiolucent. So radiolucent is black, radio-opaque is white. Dentin is like right in between. Now there's three types of dentin. There's primary, secondary, and tertiary. Let's look at all of them. So when we look at primary dentin, primary dentin is, there's two types. There's mantle and circumpulpal dentin. So mantle, mantle means like a covering, okay? Mantle is like a cover. So this thing in dark brown that we're looking at, that's your mantle dentin. And then the bulk of your dentin is circumpul, sorry, circumpulpal dentin. And that is this light brown one right here. So that's like the bulk of the primary dentin. So again, primary dentin is made up of two things. Mantle dentin, which is like the covering or the outline. And then the light brown, which is right here, is your circumpulpal dentin. So pulp is this right here, and it's like surrounding the circumference of the pulp. And maybe that's how it got its name, circum, for the circumference of the pulp and pulp for this. Um, this is your pulp. If you look at the shape of the dentinal tubules, remember I showed you that these are dentinal tubules, these holes, they, they're actually a tube. If you look at the shape of these tubes, it's actually an S shape. You can see that, right? Like it's kind of like an S. So especially in the crown, in the crown it's, it takes an S shape. The tubes kind of look like an S. Um, in the root section, it's more st of a straight line, but definitely in the coronal, in the crown section, it does take an S, the shape of an S curve, as we see here. It's kind of like an S. Okay, so we did primary dentin, which makes up of the mantle dentin and the circumpulpal dentin. We know that the primary dentin forms the body of the tooth. The bulk of the tooth is all primary dentin. That takes up the most of your tooth. The secondary dentin is just around the pulp, okay? And secondary is just a really small, narrow band that we see. And the secondary, secondary dentin is only formed once tooth gets erupted. So if this is the gum line right here, once the tooth is fully erupted, then the secondary dentin gets formed and it comes um, at a much smaller pace. The primary dentin gets formed quickly, the secondary dentin gets formed at a slower pace. 
And the last one is the tertiary dentin, and that only happens when there's trauma. So for example, this person, this toothbrush is aggressively brushing in this area and is really damaging the enamel on that tooth. And so when you brush really hard and disrupt the enamel and the gums and everything, the moment you disrupt the tooth, what happens is they recognize it, the tooth recognizes, and then they deposit more dentin in that area because of the trauma from aggressive brushing. And that deposit that they're doing to kind of protect the pulp is known as the tertiary dentin. So that is caused by trauma, which could be because of cavities, which could be due to aggressive brushing, which could be due to grinding, lots of reasons why this could happen. So let's look at primary dentin one more time. This is your first, when we're looking at the mantle dentin, that is the first primary dentin that's formed. After the mantle dentin comes the circumpulpal dentin. The mantle dentin is really small. It's like 150 micromillimeters thick, so it's really it's really small. And then this uh, circumpulpal dentin, which is the, the biggest portion of the dentin, is 6 to 8 millimeters. So micromillimeters are so tiny, millimeters is a lot bigger. And that's the bulk of your dentin in light brown. There's also like collagen fibers, so just like lines, fibers to kind of keep it nice and tight um, in your mantle dentin. So in the mantle dentin, there's large fibers. It is slightly less mineralized than the circumpulpal dentin. So it's not as hard as the circumpulpal because circumpulpal is more mineralized, more harder. The mantle dentin, which is right here, it does um, kind of interlock with the enamel, right? So it interlocks with the enamel because it's really close to the enamel. Right underneath the enamel comes the mantle dentin. Let's look at secondary dentin. So secondary dentin, that's the one right over here that covers the pulp on the outside and even on the inside. So when does this get formed? This gets formed once the, the tooth is fully erupted. It is deposited more slowly than primary dentin, so it comes really slowly. The secondary dentin is formed very slowly. And in the molar tooth, so this is a molar tooth, what happens is more secondary dentin is typically formed on the roof, so like right over here, and on the floor of the pulp chamber, so kind of right at the bottom right there. Now when we're looking at the tertiary dentin, Remember, tertiary dentin is when there is trauma to the area. So if there's cavities, caries, if there is someone is aggressively tooth brushing and is causing damage to the tooth, then tertiary dentin will be deposited. Now with the tertiary dentin, um, what happens is so it looks kind of like the bone when they deposit, when the tertiary dentin is deposited, it kind of looks like the bone. So this is uh, let's look here. This is your primary dentin, or even the sec and the secondary dentin. And then let's say they deposited tertiary dentin right there. It doesn't look like the primary secondary one. It looks really different, and that's why they call it because it resembles the bone. They call it osteo dentin, osteo for bone. So it kind of looks the dentin kind of looks like a bone. It may there are two types of tertiary dentin. There's the reparative dentin. And then there's the response or reactionary dentin. Let's look at the difference. So when we're looking at reparative dentin, what reparative dentin is, is that the dentin that gets deposited, it gets deposited by the original odontoblast. So odontoblasts are cells, okay? So if we were to look at, just so that you can picture this better, um, I'm gonna pull up a picture of dentin okay so here's here's dentin and dentin is composed of a cell known as odontoblast these are cells that make dentin and they're kind of housing they kind of they kind of live right here in the dentinal tubules okay so they live in the dentinal tubules so with the tertiary dentin these are the odontoblasts that kind of live in the tubules when we have trauma and tertiary dentin is deposited if the odontoblast is the same odontoblast that is used for primary dentin, so if you look over here, you can see that the line kind of fuses with the with the odontoblast. If it's the same odontoblast that deposits dentin, the same odontoblast that was that deposited the primary dentin is the same one, the same cell deposited it for the tertiary dentin, then it is known as reparative dentin. But if it is new odontoblasts that don't 
merge with the primary dentin odontoblast, the brand new odontoblast, then that's response dentin. So again, reparative dentin is when they use the same odontoblast for primary and secondary dentin to deposit dentin, tertiary dentin. And response dentin is when they use new, completely new odontoblasts. So what actually happened was these odontoblasts died, the original one died, and they had to make new odontoblasts to deposit tertiary dentin. And you can see it doesn't fuse with the primary um, dentin odontoblast. And so that is known as response dentin when it's new odontoblasts that form the tertiary dentin. Pre-dentin. Pre-dentin is the first dentin that gets um, laid and then after 24 hours it gets calcified. So a really small amount, 4 microns, so 4 micromillimeters of pre-dentin gets formed and then it, the next day it gets hardened, it gets calcified and then the day after more pre-dentin gets laid and then it gets calcified. So it's kind of like a in increments, but that's how it happens. Okay, let's look at these three terms. We're going to do it one by one. We're going to look at primary and secondary tubules. Primary tubules are those main tubules right here. So remember, this is your odontoblast that kind of houses the tubules. So again, if I were to draw a tubule, there is an odontoblast over here. And that's this odontoblast right here. It kind of looks like a paddle board. That odontoblast is in the tubule. And so that is known as your primary tubule, so your main one, the main tubule. But what happens is sometimes it branches off, right? You can see from the main, from the primary tubule, you get these branches, and those branches are known as secondary tubules. And these secondary tubules, sometimes they can also be called the, can the canaliculi, which is, again, branches from the main tubules. So secondary tubules or Canaliculi, actually the correct way of saying it is canaliculi. Okay, so canaliculi are those lateral branches, or secondary branches that come out from the primary tubules. Right, intratubular or peritubular dentin. Let's look at that. So remember we said that there are there is dentin, so I'm going to draw this again, a cross section, and dentinal tubules are those holes or tubules that look kind of like this. Um, so, one of the circle, if I were to look at it, it actually looks like tubes. The peritubular dentin, that's the peri that's the one that's kind of around all the dentinal tubules. Peri means around. Okay, so peri means around. So it's just extra um, dentin that are hyper mineralized, that are really hard, that surround the tubules. That's known as peritubular dentin. Um, intertubular dentin, so intertubular, is, so this is the dentinal tubule. This is peritubular dentin because it's a um, hypermineralized collar around the tubule. Intertubular, inter means in between. So everything in between, so maybe I should kind of color it in a different color. So the red that I'm trying to color in here, this is known as intertubular. So all the dentin in red and that is surrounding the dentinal tubules, that's known as intertubular dentin. So intertubular dentin is the one that's around the dentinal tubules. Inter means in between tubules. Sometimes you can get sclerotic or transparent dentin. And this what this what happens here is that the odontoblast died, so that cell, um, the cell probably um actually that's a dead track. But what I want you guys to know is that when you look at the dentinal tubules, okay, so let's look at this. When I look at the dentinal tubule, sometimes what happens is it gets plugged for many different reasons. It happens with age, um, it happens when uh, there's trauma into that area, so if someone's grinding, if someone's brushing really hard, if the tooth fractured, or if there's a cavity, what will happen in response is that the, the dentinal tubules will get plugged. Again, so if I were to look at a cross-section of all the dentinal tubules, sclerotic dentin means that it gets plugged. 
So if it gets plugged, if the holes get clogged, it's known as sclerotic or transparent dentin. Again, let's recap intertubular dentin. Inter means in between, in between what? In between the tubules. So in between the tubules, let's see here, this is these are the tubules. We have dentin, and that dentin is known as intertubular dentin. Lines of von Ebner. What happens is when dentin gets formed, it gets formed in increments, it gets formed in layers. And so these imbrication lines that we see, so those lines that we see, um, very hard to see, but you can see those lines that we're looking at that kind of curve around the cusp of, of the tooth. Those are known as von Ebner. So each time the dentin gets deposited, it kind of creates a line. And sometimes those lines are very hard to see. So every five days, you can actually see those lines. And those lines are there, not, are prominent every five days. So lines of von Ebner uh, comes every five year, days. Neonatal line, we kind of looked at this with enamel. Uh, um, there is a neonatal line in enamel, so feel free to watch the enamel video to go over that. But there's also a neonatal line in dentin. So this is the line right here. So there's postnatal dentin and prenatal dentin. So before the baby is born, so when the baby is in the womb, dentin is being formed, and the, the dentin that's formed in the womb is known as prenatal. Once the baby comes out, it's postnatal dentin, and then there's a line that's known as a neonatal dentin, or a neonatal line in dentin, and that kind of shows the difference, because what happens is when the baby comes out, it's surrounded in a new environment, new nutrients are, you know, they're taking, they're ingesting. So it looks a little different, the dentin. And so it makes this neonatal line that outlines the difference between prenatal, when it was in the womb, when the baby was in the womb, versus postnatal dentin, when the dentin is formed outside of the womb. Layer. So granular layer is an area of dentin that's just under the cementum. So what's covering the root in purple is cementum, and then underneath cementum is, de is the dentin, which is covering the root. Um, what happens is there's actually, if you zoom into it, there's actually a layer of dentin that's called the granular dentin. So granular dentin is right beside the cementum. Dead tracks. So I kind of touched on this before, and what I really want to, I actually, um, when I mention it here, the dead tracks is basically when you look at a tubule and there's no odontoblast, like the odontoblast has disappeared, and now there's just air in there. And that can happen, and when that happens, it's a dead track, it's a dead tubule. So if we see um, a dead tubule, it, what happens is reparative dentin might be formed. So remember tertiary dentin? So anytime you see a dead tract, there could be a sign of trauma in there, and then the tertiary dentin is deposited. And so you'll normally, normally see tertiary dentin very close to the dead tracts. Dentinal enamel junction. So junction is where two things meet, and what meets here? The dentin and the enamel. So when the dentin and the enamel meet, it's known as the dentinal enamel junction, and it's scalloped. It's um, curvy. It looks kind of like this. So this is the pattern of the dentinal enamel junction. And the reason why it's scalloped, or you know, bumpy like this, is so that the enamel and dentin can actually really bond nicely together. Permeability, so what happens is when you have tubules that are exposed, so come, normally the gums cover it, right? But sometimes the gums recede and then it ex the root is exposed and then the tubules are exposed. And when that happens, you get this pressure, this osmotic pressure. There's actually fluid in the tubules and that fluid kind of starts to move around and it's because of the pressure and it causes a lot of sensitivity. So sensitivity is caused when dentinal tubules are exposed. This is the dentinal tubules. So remember the tubules that I was drawing out earlier. This is this is in horizontal fashion. This is in vertical fashion. What happens is sometimes when you're um, working in a dental office and they put a drill in and they're trying to drill the tooth, there's all these 
uh, things that are flying away. So all the enamel and everything that just kind of gets, you'll see them kind of appear in the air microscopically. There's so many things that come up in the air as you're drilling. And then these things that are coming up in the air kind of from the drilling kind of land around the tooth. And that is known as the smear layer. So it's all the debris from prepping the tooth. So that debris that just flies around, it kind of lands over here and it's known as the smear layer. Lastly, just so that um, we can review this again, these are the dentinal tubules. It's a cross section of the dentin. These holes are the dentinal tubules. And what happens is after the death of an odontoblast, so remember how um, in those tubules, let's try it out again. In those tubules, we have an odontoblast. After that, once, once, these odo once the odontoblast dies, so once it dies, sclerosis of the dentin may occur where the dentin gets plugged. So the dentin, the little tubules, get plugged. So sclerosis of the dentin can occur when the odontoblast dies. All right, that's all. Thanks for listening.